So let's jump right into this. We have a DTAP battery, and we want to have that DTAP power everything on our rig, including our new Atomus uh, Ninja 5. Uh, the Ninja 5 comes with this little battery adapter, or AC adapter, meant to power it off the wall, but we are going to modify that here. So I have this plugged into my wall right now. And just for sanity's sake here, I have used a multimeter. And I have checked to make sure that the center pin is positive on this, and it is. So knowing that the center pin is positive, we're going to unplug this out of the wall because we don't want to cut this cable in half while it's plugged in, obviously. And I ordered this cable. I'll put a link in the description down here. It is a DTAP cable. Um, it does not have the right end on it, so we're going to put a new end on it, but that's really simple to do. So that fits in, and it only fits in one way. So we need to make sure the way we wire this, that the center pin that we wire onto that guy is going to also be positive. So jump right in. This cable is approximately 18 inches. Um, I want a little extra length than that uh, on my connector, just because of the way I might have to route uh, power. So we're going to come down about, eh, about that. Looks good to me. Cut that off. Pull that apart a little bit. And strip the wires. So it helps to have the right tools, helps to have wire strippers to be able to do this. Helps to have um, a pair of side cutters here, just because it makes cutting down the center of a two conductor cable like this pretty simple to do. So you get a nice clean cut on things. So those ends are cut. We will go ahead and also put ends on this cable too in case we ever do wanna use the uh, wall adapter there, but that's unlikely. I am never gonna use this little weird end here. So this end is just going away. So I'm gonna cut this pretty close to the end. So I have no, no use for that cable. I have no idea what that actually even goes to. So this one is a little different. This has a jacket around two conductors. So my experience here, we're just gonna to try to cut into this sheath in here a little bit and eventually pop it off. So let's make sure we didn't nick the wires because we don't want to have bare copper that could short something out. It looks good to me. Now we're gonna strip these as well. Okay. So these are a thinner conductor than what these are here. So make sure when you get connectors like this um, that they will actually use a small wire like that, they're not gonna to be too large. Now, I would normally advise that when you make a connector like this, that you wire it in such a way that you can't accidentally plug it in the wrong direction. I, however, only have one set of this connector and one set of another, so that'll be fine in and of itself. So by using two different types of connectors, I obviously can't plug it in backwards. But if you only had the same type of connector, what I'd recommend doing is taking the female end and putting it on one end here, and then the male end on this one, like this, and in the reverse on the other side, and you would never be able to plug them in backwards. If you were to put two females on here, two males on the other one, you could easily plug it in incorrectly and uh, cause a problem. But if you wire it like that, or in my case here, we're gonna wire it like this, then you can't wire this wrong. So now that we have this cut, this wire happens to be marked. Most wire um, that is marked like this, you can usually trust, but as you notice, there's a dash on here on this wire. That is the negative side of it. But just for sanity's sake, we're gonna flip over to continuity testing, which if we connect these wires here together, we get a beep. So we're gonna hold on the outside here. And that happens to be the wire that is on the negative side. Now one thing you can do, uh, if you have it, I'm not sure if I have any or not, it'll fit on this is you can use some heat shrink tubing. That's too narrow. Might not have heat shrink, here we go. So I might not have heat shrink small enough, but that can just help give a little extra strength to the wire. Now we have a split here, so it's not gonna do much for the split, but having it on there and then heat shrinking it, give a little bit extra strength to that connection. So put these on there first, because you're not going to get these on there once you cut stuff and start crimping things on. 
So that one's on. This one's pretty safe, actually, because it has that external sheath on there. Now, it depends on what size of connectors you get, whether or not you're going to have an issue crimping these or not and getting the wire in there. All right, first one's on. We'll go ahead and put the other one on here as well. All right, that's on there. My heat shrink uh, gun is not anywhere near this. You can use a lighter, but it makes it kind of uh, a burnt, rubbery smell. The heat shrink gun is actually down in my basement, so you will not get to see this part, but all it is is basically a very focused hair dryer that will just help melt this around there. So those two are on. Now we gotta figure out on the other side what side which one of these is positive and which one is negative. Now, this wire is conveniently marked with different colors. I'm betting that they follow standard and that white is positive and black is negative, but we're gonna check that. Now when you check this, there's a lot of current in this battery. Make sure you do not short this out accidentally. So we're gonna plug that in. We're gonna turn our meter back on here, back to voltage. And now we're gonna be really careful not to short this battery. Yes, the white is the positive side. So I'm gonna unplug that. So if we look back at our connector here, we ended up putting the uh, small red one on here on the one that goes to the positive. So we'll put the small red one on this side for the positive so that they can connect together. Now, if you were using the same type of connector, just make sure that you put the um, mating end onto the proper side here so it can only get plugged in one way. Essentially what we're doing here as well. side is on. Put the other connector on here. All right, now we have two connectors on there. Um, this heat shrink is probably not even necessary right here because this is such a tight cable. So I'll probably actually end up uh, doing some of this electrical tape on this just to make these a little more mechanically sound. But now we can plug this together and it only plugs in one way because of the way we wired this. Just like that. For me, this will have to get saved until I get more connectors. But now that we have this plugged on here, we can plug this in. And let's check this just to make sure. Yep, we have positive in the center, as expected. So, now we should be able to take our dummy battery plate that Atomus shipped with the Atomus Ninja 5. Wire that in. Take off the battery. And... Plug in the plate. All right, so there is our monitor. Plug that in and power it on. Wait for it to turn on here. And there we go. We now have a big V-mount battery powering our Atomus. So when this gets all rigged out on the camera, which I'll do another video on here at some point, uh, when this gets all rigged down there, we'll have the ability to power the Atomus as well as the Nikon Z6, which is what's filming me right now, all off of this battery here. And we can get rid of these little tiny batteries. So this is not that tiny. But we can get rid of these tiny batteries and get a lot more runtime out of our camera rig and also get pretty decent balance too because having this weight behind the shoulder on a shoulder rig and having not having this one on the front where the monitor is at will, uh, will help out with the balance because you got glass and the camera forward already. 
having this extra thing on the front of the Atomus um, really made the thing a little front heavy. Plus it put a lot of weight on this little articulating arm to keep the camera out there. So in the future video, I will go through the builds for how this works, but I wanted to show you just how simple it actually was to make a cable like this to power your Atomus and you don't have to uh, buy a special cable for it. You can just buy some cheap parts and uh, have a crimper and put it on yourself. If you like this, please like and subscribe. Uh, and until next time, have a good one. Dang, I don't have a catchphrase yet. I need a catchphrase for this channel. We'll think of that next time.